In this Blender tutorial, I'll show you how to create this procedural iridescent metal material. And after I show you how to create this procedural material, I'll be showing you how to join it together into this custom nude group. So we have three different customizable colors. So we have kind of this orangey color for color one. Then for color two, we kind of have this pink color. And then for color three, we have this blue color. But of course you can customize this however you want. But these are the colors which I most see when looking at reference images of this type of metal. Then we also have this color shift. So if you want to be more of one color, you can turn the color shift up and down. Then there's also the metallic so if you don't want it to be metal you can turn that down and there also is the roughness of the metal if you'd like to purchase this procedural material you can get it with the links in the video description and you can also check out my ultimate blender procedural material pack if you'd like to purchase all of my materials and to learn how to create more materials you can check out my blender procedural material tutorial playlist so before we start, I'll go over the 3D setup if you want to set up the blend file the same way that I have. So I started off just by adding a few different objects. So I like added this icosphere here and I subdivided it and shaded it smooth. I also added like a cube with a bevel just because I thought it would be cool to see it on a cube. I also added a monkey head with a subdivision surface modifier. And then I also added these silverware models. And these silverware models are from my furniture and home asset pack. So in my furniture and home asset pack here in the asset library, I just searched for silver and then I just dropped in the silverware models. And I thought it would be really cool to add the iridescent metal to silverware models because I've actually seen these online. You can actually purchase like silverware, which has this kind of like rainbowy color. So I thought it'd be cool to view it on some silverware. Now, as for the lighting, I went over here to the world properties and I added in the Machine Shop 02 1K HDRI from Polyhaven. So you can download it with the link in the video description and I downloaded the 1K JPEG version. And to add in the HDRI, you can click on the yellow dot here next to color. You can choose the environment texture and then just click on the open button and open up the HDRI. And then also let's go here to the render properties. And if you open up the color management, I'm using the view transform of filmic and I set the look to very high contrast. And also on the film tab, I hit the transparent button just so that the background is transparent. And also just to add a little bit more light to the scene, I added this area light right here. And so I turned the power to hundred and just left it as a white color, just so we get a little bit more direct light on the object. So I'm in the shading workspace. So I have the 3D viewport right over here. I'm just gonna zoom into these objects. And then I have the shader editor right over here. So I will select the object, we'll add a new material, and I'm just gonna call this iridescent metal. And then what I can do is I can hold down the shift key and select all the other objects. And then lastly, select the monkey head and hit control L and we're going to link the material. So they all have the same material. So this material is actually pretty simple. What we're gonna do is start by searching for the layer weight, and we're gonna plug the facing into the base color. So basically what the layer weight is doing is it's making the faces black when they're directly pointed at the camera, but then as they're kind of started to angle away, they become white. So you can see like if I rotate the objects, you can see they actually are changing where it's black and where it's white. So I'm going to use this to create some cool metal colors. So first what I want to do is search for the color ramp. So if I just type in ramp, I'm just going to add the color ramp and I'm going to drag the white tab over here. So it's a bit more contrasted. So now that it's more contrasted, you can't see as much of the black. So now what I'm going to do is search for the mix color. We'll drop the mix color after the color ramp and the color can go into the fact. So now we have two different colors for color A and color B, and we can make custom colors. So for color A, I'm gonna go with this orangey color, and here is the hex value if you wanna copy the exact same hex code I'm using to use the same color. And then here is color B, and this is a pinkish color, and here is the hex code if you wanna punch in the same color. But then what I also wanna do is put in another color, kinda of like a bluish color. So I'm gonna select both the color ramp and the mix and hit Control Shift D. So Control Shift D will duplicate the nodes but keep the wires plugged up. And I'll drag this back so I have more space. And I'll drag this mix over here. And then I'm gonna take this mix result and I'm gonna put that into color A. And this color ramp is gonna go into the factor. So now for this one, I'm gonna drag the tabs over here, just drag them over like that. And let's also control shift select the mix here to preview it. And I'll drag the white tab over here, drag the black tab over about there. So the contrast is a little bit different. So you can see here's the first one, but here's the second one. So we're now just making kind of the back parts more white. So let's just preview the mix here. And so for this, I'm gonna make it kind of like a light blue, kind of a teal color. 
And if you want to use the exact same color I'm using, you can punch in this hex value there into color B. So now you can see we have like three different layers of colors, and these are the colors which I've seen on the reference images. You could add in lots more colors if you want to. You could also just like add a color ramp and add a bunch of like custom colors, but I think this looks the most realistic when comparing it to the reference images. So I'm going to put the result into the base color, and I'll just control shift select the principled shader to preview it. Now to make it look like metal, we'll turn the metallic up, and then I'll turn the roughness down to like a 0.15 so it's pretty shiny so now I'll join it together into a node group so I'm gonna click and drag to box select all the nodes accept the material output and I'll hit control G to join it together into a node group let's hit tab to go outside the node group and I'll drag the node group over here I'll make it bigger and I can copy the material name and paste it here into the node group so let's hit the tab key to go into the node group and I'll hit the N key to open up the side panel and we'll go to the group tab and I'll double click on this to rename it and just rename it to shader because I like that better. So now I can plug all the custom values up to the group input. So first what I want to do is add the colors. So I'll take color A and color B and then also this color B here and put all of those into the extra sockets on the group inputs. And then I can rename this to color one color two and color three. Then I wanna add the color shift. So there is this blend value here, which I can drag. And so that's kind of shifting the colors because it's changing the layer weight. So I'll put the blend into the extra socket. And I think calling this color shift kind of makes sense. And then I'll drag the group input up here. And we also wanna put the metallic and the roughness, both of these into the extra sockets so we can control that. So I'll drag the group input back there at the end, and I'll hit tab to go outside the node group, and I'll hit N to close the side panel. So we have the different colors, so color one, color two, and then also color three. So you can use these colors to really customize the look of the metal. Then we also have this color shift, so you can make it like more of just color one, or you can add more and more of color three if you want to. Then you can also control the metallic value, and that's actually pretty cool if you want to make sort of like a, maybe like a stylized plasticky material, that kind of looks cool. And then there is also the roughness. So that's how you create this iridescent metal material. So I hope you found the video helpful, and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to purchase the tutorial project files, you can get that with the links in the video description. And you can also check out my ultimate blender procedural material pack if you'd like to purchase all of my procedural materials. And to learn how to create more procedural materials, you can check out my blender procedural material tutorial playlist. So I hope you found this helpful and thank you for watching.